Good morning, I'm Chris from Minneapolis, Minnesota. I'm visiting Mount Vernon this week. Good morning, Mount Vernon and Lisbon. Hi, I'm Jerry Deach from the Sauerkraut Days Committee. Good morning, Mount Vernon and Lisbon. Good, Good morning, morning, Mount Vernon and Lisbon. I'm Joe. And I am Kim. And we are still promoting the awesomeness of the Mount Vernon and Lisbon area. Good morning, Nathan. Good morning, Joe. Good morning. Good morning, good morning. June has gone so fast. Yeah. Oh, is this still June? It, the last June. <laughs> this will be the last June because next week we probably won't do it since I'm not here. Yeah, that'd be funny. Yeah. Well, How do we do that with her? It might here? be better. <laughs> Kim Puppet stand in. Oh, well, you probably wouldn't be able to tell much <laughs> difference. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's get started. So we won't be here next week. No. And that's okay. And that's okay. We don't have to be here every week. We weren't here time. last week because you, you were out of town. You can read the paper on your own. You don't need us. Yeah. But don't rob my house. There's people watching. <laughs> okay. All right. I guess I'll change my plans for this weekend. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody's staying in my house, so there's going to be somebody in there. So don't even think about it, people. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Mount Vernon, Lisbon, this is your breaking news. Ooh, volume 152, number 25, June 24th, 2020. Hello. Hello. <laughs> so, what? Antique lovers, get ready. Get ready. It says right here. It's happening again. The Mount Vernon, Lisbon Community Development Group, that's the organization I work for, disclaimer there. Right there. We'll be hosting the Lincoln Highway Nitty Gritty Festival, Sunday, July 4th from 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. That, of course, takes place in Uptown Mount Vernon. It's a big deal. Yeah, it is a big deal. It we is. usually get thousands of people. Yep. Um, and there's several antique dealers. Yep. So, um, uh, lots to choose from. And all the stores are open. Yeah. And uh, we've got eight antique stores of our own right here out here. So exactly. if antiques is your thing, Mount Vernon is a place for you. July especially 4th. Especially on the 4th of July. Absolutely. The festival will feature primitive, architectural salvage, industrial, repurposed furniture, and antiques. Ooh. Yeah. It's, all, it's all the goodness. Yeah. Uh, a dealer preview will also take place Saturday, July 3rd from 7 to 10 p.m. Oh, always. Important to know, because we're locals. You can go on Saturday, that's the 3rd, from 7 to 10 p.m. and get a preview oh, and buy up all the antiques before the real buyers come on the 4th at 7 a.m. So you can buy them on the 3rd. Because mm -hmm. sometimes previews mean you can just look and like hold that for Oh, no, you're, you can purchase. It's up to the individual antique dealer okay. who's out on the street. Yep. And some of them get there late and they'll be still setting up. Right. So, but why yeah. wouldn't they want to sell their stuff a day early? Everyone wants to sell. Yes. Nobody wants to take all those big antiques back home. With Nobody them. wants to haul the hutch home. <laughs> nope. It's easier for those of us who are local to haul the hutch home. Yes. Because we just have to go a couple blocks. Absolutely. But you may have a hill. Well, so yes, keep that in mind. hopefully down. But even down, you've got to be careful because the things don't have brakes usually. Just okay. put them on a wheelie cart and let go. There you go. <laughs> Wherever it lands, <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> Look out, Grandma! <laughs> okay. Uh, the Sweet City White Broad sales took place. I think they were a success. There were signs all over the town. Well, I was out of town, so I didn't see any of it. Yeah. But I've got a big room full of garage sale stuff. I, I put together thinking I was going to do it anyway, but I never got it done. Oh, well. we'll and I bet you a lot of people are like that. They say, oh, yeah, let's get all this together. And then they go, oh, you mean we actually have to work that day? <laughs> okay, forget it. I'm just going to haul this to crowd Plaza. You could do that. That's what I do. Okay. <laughs> After a year in hiatus due to you-know-what... Uh, the Mount Vernon and Lisbon Citywide Garage Sales were back in action with more than 36 different sales throughout Mount Vernon and Lisbon community. Yeah. Shereen Handsome Player, again, here she comes, said that the garage sale was a unique fundraiser, and while items were moved to sell quickly, uh, the band was seeing quite a few more donations to their cause to help the members get to Chicago. She told me this too. So they're raising money to get that band to the Thanksgiving Day Parade, right? Mm -hmm. At Lisbon United Methodist Church, several items were handy with funds being raised for churches and missions programs. So there you go. Sell your crap and uh, send it to get money for a good cause. Yeah. Yeah. So, so or some places they'll be like, if you don't have money to donate, give us your old car or your old boat or something. So. You know. Yeah, well, something. you know what? I don't have either of those. Mm. No. But I think I might have some Tinker Toys. <gasps> really? I love Tinker Toys. What can you get for those at a garage sale? Oh, those are those three dollars. Those should go on nitty gritty because you're an antique. And your toys are too. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I got a booth 
for my one box your of box paper toys. toys. Yes. <laughs> okay. So, um, papers available for city school board elections. I guess that's coming up. Oh, coming up. Yeah. So here we go. Listen to Nomina the council. Yeah. Nomination papers can now be taken out for school board and city elections this fall. Lisbon City Council Member Stephanie Camberling noted that the papers can be picked up now to get the needed signatures to get on the ballot during the city so council. So this is notes. if you want to run for school board mm -hmm. or city council, mm -hmm. you have to get signatures to let people know that they actually want you. Oh sure, yeah, you've got to get your signatures. Yeah, so you can't just throw your name out there and let it happen. Just show up. Yeah. They don't let you do that. You can't stand outside the voting booth and say, "Write me in." No, that's write bad. me in. That's bad. Oh, you can't do that. No. Okay, bulky item cleanup is June 26th. For Lisbon. Yeah. Here's the story. The city of Lisbon. There we right. go. <laughs> we'll be holding a bulky item cleanup day on Saturday, June 26th, 7 to 11 a.m. Large items can be dropped, dropped off at the city shop on Market Street. City shop, is that the city hall building? Is that the city No, city, city hall is its own entity. The... <laughs> anyway, it says right here on Market yeah. Street. Call City Hall if you don't know where it is. There's a number at the bottom. Who wrote this article? Not me, but I know. Okay, here's your, here's your phone number. 319-455-2459. Perfect. Ask them where, where to bring their bulky items. Don't drop, your, don't drop your washing machine off in the parking lot of City Hall. And say Joe told me. No, oh my God, please don't say Joe told me to. <laughs> oh my God. All right. All right. Oh, no oh. speed limit signs. Nathan okay, Countryman story. Here we go. Woo! The speed limit has gone from 55 to 45. Really? Yeah. Per hour along stretches of Business 30, and the police department may be giving people time to adapt to the slower speed limit. Well, pay attention, because yeah. it's like when they put that stop sign on 10th Avenue. Oh my gosh, don't say Oh that. my gosh, yeah. I stopped through the middle of the intersection multiple times. Because I was like, Oops, you know. Well, new 45 mile per hour speed limit signs along Business 30 were installed on June 7. Oh my. But the police will be issuing warnings rather than tickets for the first month. Thank you. Just remind us. Yeah. Old dog. New trick. <laughs> okay. Um, this is Doug Shannon. We're already noticing that several of the vehicles we've been clocking have been closer to the 45 speed limit on those stretches of road already. So Do we know where the stretches are? What's From the roundabout? To Lisbon, for the most part. Okay. All right. It used to be 55 out mm -hmm. there, but past the Palisades Dentist. Yep. And to that intersection by the cemetery, that used to be 55. It's now 45. Pay attention. That's probably good. Yes. Yeah. You got to slow down to 35 in front of the school anyway. Less is more, you guys. Less is more. That's right. All, All right. right. Oh, I what? forgot about this. What? Farm to fork tails. <gasps> Yes. Let's read about this together, shall we? Yes. Who wants to hear about this? It looks really interesting. I think Community Theater sponsored one of these, I think. Oh, I'm not sure. How exciting. Nothing binds people together like the weather. I suppose. Yeah. If you got eight feet of snow, you got to stay inside. Yeah. yeah. So what could be a more fitting way to kick off Heritage Weekend than five farmers telling stories about the ever-changing phenomenon? Laura Krause, Alan Molly, David Miller, Kevin Woods? Well, this makes me really excited. Oh, great to, storytellers. Yeah, to, to hear this. Farm to Forks Tales is produced in cooperation with Mary Swander, former Iowa Poet Laureate and Professor Emerita at Iowa State University. Swander has worked with five local people to develop their stories about weather in the Iowa countryside. In addition to the stories, there will be live music from the Mississippi Band, not yeah. the Mississippi String Band. I'm wondering if it is that. They changed their name? No. Uh, maybe it's a different one. A trio, that, I, well, that sounds like them, two members of the Iowa Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. No, that is Dale and Okay. And the yeah. music will begin right after the end of the regular Thursday Farmer's Market. Well, this sounds fun. Oh, fun. Can I go? Oh, and I didn't see Susan Aaron. The event is made possible by a grant from the Iowa Arts Council. Mm. So I'm assuming that means that's a free event. Is that true? I don't see a price. I'll just show up. If they yeah. ask me for some money, I'll give them. Yeah. Oh, security cameras installed in downtown Lisbon. Really? Where? New security cameras have been installed in downtown Lisbon that give a view of the intersections of Washington and Main Street 
as well as several downtown businesses. Oh, well, that's good. good. Yes. Work is ongoing to relocate the security camera server at the Lisbon City Park. Okay. The security cameras give Lisbon City staff the ability to view or review review footage on the cameras in case there's an accident in the area. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. Oh, I think that's a good that's idea. That's great. And they're looking to install one more wide-angle camera on the Lisbon History Center. Oh, good. So there you go. Awesome. Well, you know, those cameras are everywhere. Why shouldn't they be in downtown Lisbon? You know, well, there's, there's cameras here. I got like one on us right now. I got nothing to hide. Yeah. I like to be, I, I prefer being video, so. Why not? Well, we have a 24-hour TV show you and We are on all the time. Yeah, we so. are. Okay, limited use of consumer fireworks allowed in unincorporated Lynn County. Okay. As the 4th of July holiday approaches, Lynn County reminds the public that use of consumer fireworks in unincorporated Lynn County is allowed only during the following time frames. Okay. July 4 between 9 and 11 p.m. Okay, at 11.01 p.m.? Stop. No fireworks. No fireworks, and you can probably find your dog hiding in the yes. bathroom in the tub. That's what my dog used to hide. Oh, yeah. Turtle. Poor babies. Yeah. So there you go. And be responsible. Safety first, people. Safety first with fireworks. Don't be blown off. My grandfather thought that the bottle rocket stick was to hold on to. It's not. Has he returned to Earth yet? <laughs> he left Earth a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, dear. Okay, uh, cool. we're, we're hiring two teachers in Lisbon. Very nice. Funding for positions coming from ESSER funds. Okay. Lisbon approved hiring a fourth grade elementary teacher and a student success coach for the secondary school. Very nice. These teacher contracts will be made for two years as funding for the position comes from one-time COVID-19 money provided by the elementary and secondary school emergency fund. That's what ESSER is. So the okay. district received that money uh, through the COVID grants, and that's how they're using it. And oh my goodness, let's have more teachers. Oh that's a God. good idea. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Very okay, good. let's see what's going on here. Uh, Lynn County Fair has a new manager. His name is Matthew Durland. The Lynn County Fair Association welcomed Matthew oh, Durian. I read that wrong. Mm. Durian. You'll understand when you're 58, ladies and gentlemen. Sometimes an I and an L. Tiny print. Yep. Tiny print. Okay. Uh, the position will work closely with the rentals of the Lynn Dunn Memorial Building Partnership Program for the Lynn County Fair and other fair week duties as assigned by the board. Okay. He starts June 1. I grew up showing livestock at my local county fair, he says, back home, and I've always enjoyed my days at the fair. I am extremely excited about this opportunity to give back to youth organizations and support an important section of the agricultural industry. That's him. Yeah. Then County Matthew. Go on. Yeah. So we've got that to look forward to. Yeah. Things are feeling like it's, summer's back to normal, kind of. The fair's happening right now, mm -hmm. June 23rd to the 27th. Right? Yep. Well, what? This is like an old story then. No. No. It's not the 27th. It's 23rd to the It started Wednesday, it goes to the Thursday. Yeah. Oh, okay. You're okay. But he, he started in position June 1. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But it was for this year's fair. And I think we should all read the uh, In the Heights review uh, that Nathan wrote right over here at some point. So make sure you read that. My daughter's seen it. I haven't seen it yet. Okay. I saw the poster in front of the beach. Oh, that's Black Widow. Black Widow, that's coming. Coming soon. So movies are going to be back to the beach. Coming movie. soon. Be nice. Yeah. yeah. Well, that will be a, a momentous weekend. I'll be anxious to talk to you. It's coming up soon. It's like early July. Yeah, 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 yeah definitely. So, I'll have to talk to you about that movie off camera. <laughs> I think it was beautiful, I've heard. And, of course, I saw it on Broadway with the entire cast, except Lynn Manuel Miranda. But, yeah. He was out. He knew you were coming. He knew I was coming. He sat with me. Oh God. He Her again. He said, Her again. We worry. We worry. She's gonna she's gonna blow me kisses. I was so close that the dancer's sweat flew on me though. That was lovely. Ew. No. We're not close enough out of COVID for that to be fun. That was years ago. <laughs> okay. Uh guess what time it is? Oh my god, we're skipping over. I think yes, of course! Co corner, co corner! Here we go. Corner, this is corner. Kathy Bob's cold corner, ladies and gentlemen. Yes! Co corner! Alright, the Pulitzer Prize winners normally announced in April, have been chosen. This prestigious prize is not just for books, but also for journalism, 
Joseph Pulitzer, who created the prize, was an influential journalist who encouraged excellence and sought to make journalism a university-trained profession. Well, good for him. Yeah. All right. Um, winning book titles, The Night Watchman, Ooh. Franchise The Golden Arches in Black America, Good. The Dead Are, Are Arising, The Life of Malcolm X, Interesting. Wilmington's Lie, The Murderous Coup of 1898, and The Rise of White Supremacy, oh, wow. mm. and Postcolonial Love Poem. So they've got them at Colt Library, so you can check them out there. We don't normally talk about obituaries, but um, there is an obituary of, of a woman that passed this uh, recently, and she was my elementary school music teacher, Mrs. Palmer, oh. and she was phenomenal. And a phenomenal woman. She taught us how to play the kodo. Yeah. Sakura, it's a it's a stringed mm. Japanese instrument. Cool. How many kids in small town Iowa in the 70s get, get to play a kodo? Mm -hmm. And we all learned recorder in the days where we just dumped the same recorder into mouthwash back in the day when we didn't get strapped in the seatbelts. But she was a phenomenal woman and a phenomenal teacher, and I will miss her greatly. That's all I want to well, say. Well, very good. Very nice. We've lost a, a number of people in the last few weeks. And, yes. Um, you know, I don't want to overshadow others who have lost them. No. But um, very good. All right, here we go. Ooh, we can look at this. Out. We got a really cool story about Nanette of Biggs Barbecue and Brew. What's going on? Ooh, that's a nice one. This is for this new section, Taste. <gasps> Taste. Yeah. Nanette Rambo grew her career from the ground up. Mm -hmm. Cooking and gardening went hand in hand. As a girl, Rambo didn't say she wanted to be a chef, but now that she's here, it feels like destiny. Well, good for them. Yeah. So her and her husband purchased a big barbecue, and they've been doing some cool things there. You go in, you see some real changes to the building, and uh, they've got a lot of outside dining. It's really kind of cool what they've oh, done there. Very cool. Yeah. So anyway, I want you to read all about that. Um, time for sports. Yes, we love uh, sports. Mount Vernon stacks up victories. MV softball squad has undefeated week. Wow, well, that's pretty good. Are they playing on that new field yet? Not yet. Oh, it's getting close. It's looking good. <laughs> okay. Can't wait. I haven't been driving by, so I don't know what it looks oh, like. Oh, we play at the playground a lot at the school, so I can... Who's that, you and Nathan? <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. No, me and my grandson. Oh, yes, of course. It was a strong week of wins for the Mount Vernon softball team as the Sluggers swept center point Urbana and South Tama in double headers and four wins in two different tournament plays. Mustangs are ranked second in the June wow. Sanjin Class 3A softball poll. Wow. Only behind Davenport Assumption. Oh, assumption. assumption. Mount Vernon pitchers with a stout defense behind them are among the state leaders in batting average against allowing a steamy .150 to opposing offenses. What? what? Offenses? <laughs> offenses? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, don't offend me with my pronunciation of offenses. Oh, offenses. All right. So, Mustangs will be tested this well, week. Oh, they will. It's a test. With double headers scheduled with West Delaware Monday, June 21, Solon on Wednesday, June 23, and Marion in Omega. Thursday, June 24th. Wow! Solon is second at the conference, Marion third, and West Delaware fourth. All have winning records. Wow, that's going to be a... What, it's not a barn burner in softball. What is it? Barn burner is basketball, right? Mm -hmm. So what is it? What is it with its softball? We don't know. Okay, it's going to be exciting. <laughs> You're clearly talking to the wrong two in. <laughs> <laughs> All right. He's got a new team in a new state. But what? Mount Vernon new varsity boys baseball coach, wow. Charles Chapman, and the Mustang players are quickly finding a home with each other. Chapman right. has come to the position by way of Tustin, which is located in Orange County, California. Oh my goodness. Came a long way. Wow. Having coached coach high school baseball there for nine years, wow. with a coaching career of nearly 20 years now. He looks so young. Yeah. Um, anyway. Um, let's see. Oh, this is his quote, I think. The reality is we fell in love with this place for my seventh grader. Oh, awesome. Nice. He's a father of two. He 
He's the reason why we moved here. I was going to ask, speaking about the why does a person move to Mount Vernon from Orange County, California? Now California has, a hard, has had a hard year. They, they had have, hard with COVID. Yeah, it's beautiful. Not that we had it easy, but they had it really hard. Yeah. So I'm glad they're here. Well, we'll just have to buy them some scarves and hats and mittens for the winter. They won't yeah. be used to that. You guys don't get all um, overwhelmed by the winter months. No, it passes. Hang in there. Yep. And um, uh, we're really glad you're here. So yeah. don't get mad at us and leave, all right? right. We're going to be really, really nice to all of you, and mm -hmm. we'll understand that winter's hard. Yes. Okay? Welcome to Mount Vernon. Yeah, thank you. It'll be really fun to see you guys around. So yeah. glad you're here. So Lion Softball sweeps East Buchanan. Wow. So, sweeps. Sweeps them. Well, what else should you do? That's you got a broom big, and a dustpan. Big victory. You sweep up baseball players. Sweep it. All right. Or softball. Or softball. <laughs> the Lisbon Lions softball team had a split week, winning three games and losing three games. Oh, oh. that's split. Oh, boy. The Lions swept East Buchanan in a doubleheader and won against Durant in the week for their three wins. Okay. Then the Lions hosted rival, rival, rival. North Lynn Thursday, oh. June 17th, squeezing in both games between raindrops. Oh. Lions have steadily moved up to class two and they captured both games. Capture Lynn. Don't you be capturing us? Yeah. Boo. Yeah. Okay. All right. Now we're on baseball. Big spread. For Lisbon baseball. Yeah, nice photos too. Who takes those? Margaret? Okay, all by Margaret. Good job, Margaret. Okay, and Trent just took what two it looks like. Yes, it looks like. So, uh, Mount Vernon baseball team has mixed results. Mount Vernon baseball team had a split week with three losses and three wins. Mm -hmm. The Mustangs split a doubleheader with Center Point Urbana, swept South Tama in a doubleheader, and lost a doubleheader against Central DeWitt. I understand they are young, and I understand once you get a baseball team here, why not play a couple games? But how exhausting. That is exhausting. To play two games, and especially you never know how long they're going to last. Mm -hmm. So you could play 17 innings and then have to get a drink of water and play 10 more. It's exhausting. So I'm exhausted. I'm exhausted just reading about it. Yeah. Mm. So Lisbon baseball squad is up and down. Up and Like down. a pogo stick. Up All right. And it down. was a challenging week for the Lisbon Lions baseball team this I'm week. I'm sorry. Yeah. With the Lions taking two wins and four losses in play during the week. Lions won against East Buchanan and Ooh. won game against Prince of Peace in a doubleheader. Yay! Well, that's good. Okay, well, let's go get to the bad news. Some nice pictures. I love them with the way when they get those pictures in, in stop motion photos where you see what their arms are doing to get the ball to do yeah. those things. Uh, Cornell it almost looks like that, this picture. It's almost like he's. he's and his arm is yeah. like removing Somewhere. out of the socket to get it. Yeah. Have you ever seen a submarine picture? Have you ever seen a submarine picture, Nathan? Hmm. That normally when you release, you release like this. Mm -hmm. A submarine picture releases low like okay. this. It's the most interesting thing. Cornell has a, a player. That's that's got hurt. Yeah. You know, that you have to be made up of a certain ligament and tendon issues to be able to pitch like yeah. that. Pitch at all. You've been doing it all your life. You kind of train your arm to well, be able to. If you do it correctly, if you don't do it correctly, you don't have a very long career as a pitcher. So. And your arm hurts, and you put it in yes. ice between yes. games. Yes. Oh my goodness. Where are you? Soccer players. Okay. I've got ahead of me. And you. Earn season and accolades. They should. They had a Let's great Let's all stand season. up right now and give them a standing ovation. Those are your season and accolades, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. A number of Mount Vernon boys soccer players were named to the WAMAC East All Conference teams mm -hmm. at the end of the season. That's great. Making first team from Mount Vernon were players Jake Hunter and Aiden Grudzinski. Mm -hmm. uh, making second team were players TJ Nosbish and Sage Fetcher. Nice. Players earning a WAMAC recognition award were Eli Dixon and Luke Stevens. Well, there you go. Yes. All right, well, congratulations. Congratulations, guys. gentlemen. Very good. All right. Oh, no. I know. This is bad news. This is what I was saying. Oh, we don't want to read this story, do we? No, we do, because oh. she's wonderful. Kim Steele is retiring following 30 years in teaching. Oh. She is a very familiar face. Yes, she is. Um, known her for a long time. Such energy, such enthusiasm, yeah. such commitment to you teaching. You run into her on the street, and you feel like that she's just pure joy and love. Yeah. Like, wow. Yes. What was that they just walked by? Exactly. So, 19 years at Mount Vernon Schools. 
Kim Steele is pretty sure she always wanted to be a teacher. Well, it certainly fits It her. showed, yes. Yeah. Um, it seemed like the vocation pulled her from early on. She retired from Mount Vernon Community School District. Okay, here's her quote, ladies and gentlemen. From playing school on the back porch of my house growing up with the neighborhood kids, to volunteer tutoring in teachers' classrooms in my high school days, to working with kid programs all the way through my college years, I always remember the feeling of helping a child work through concepts and see their light bulb light up when they were able to understand it, she mm. said. Well, good for her. We and miss she her. is a light bulb all on her own. God bless her. Yes. And don't be a stranger. I know we'll see you at uh, Sauerkraut Days. That's when you're always a big part of that event. Um, but anyway, uh, please uh, don't retire from the rest of the world. No. Okay? Still be around. And we'll see you around. Up. Yeah. So, uh, a lot of teachers, too, once they retire, they volunteer. Yeah. They don't ever leave the building. Oh, place. I got a spot for you, Kim. Yes. If you want it. Yes. Just come see me. That's right. You keep your light bulb going, girl. Yeah, baby. Okay, three board seats are up in November. Oh, my. Um, three of Mount Vernon School Board's seven positions are up for election November 2. Rick Elliott, oh, that's too bad. Well, good for him. He's yeah. had a long He run. has served and served and served this uh, Sherry Grunder and Roy Murlock's mm -hmm. positions are all expiring. Um, they serve for four years. So anyway, there's a nice story, and you can read about it. Um, and if you're at all interested, get your report. signatures, and let's... let's uh, Let's get some new board members in there. Yeah. So there you go. That's what I've got. I'm I calling that the story. I think that's great. Right. It's in that paper. You know, we just skim it. So yeah. you pick it up and read it cover to cover. Will Absolutely. You? Lots right. of good goodness in there. If it's okay, I would like to go ahead and sing now. It's in honor important. of all the retiring teachers in the world. Okay. Just what makes that little old ant think he can move that rubber tree plant? Everyone knows an ant can't. Move the rubber tree plant, but he's got high hopes. He's got high hopes. He's got high hopes.